Thank you so much, Jim. That was such an interesting talk and really had us um, really speaking together at the back about all the relevance we could see and the applications as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess as current PhD students, you know, we've had challenges of needing funding to do aspects of our project. Um, one of the questions that sort of popped into my mind um, and, and other people were asking similar things on Twitter as well as, is also apart from, I guess, how do we get funds, is how do we maximise the funds that we do get? So how can we be really efficient in how we use that money, whether that be in how we source data, so whether we ask the community to send us videos of their dogs, or whether we um, collaborate better as individual researchers within the same field. So for an example, my project has elements of animal behaviour, animal physiology, um, human psychology, so I feel like a little bit of a generalist spread out across all these areas and yep. I have had to collaborate strongly with people who know more about those areas than myself to learn. But I kind of feel like there's a lot of great work happening but not so many opportunities for us to collaborate. Do you have thoughts yeah. on that? I, 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 I do. And, and I guess it comes from a bias of mine. I'm a collaborator. I enjoy collaborating. I see collaborating as a way to, um, to leverage you know, resources. And so I feel very strongly that, and, and I mean, this where this comes from is that collaboration is the key. And, and when we have a field where I think there are so many needs, uh, every talk we've had has, has <laughs> opened up more questions, right? Um, and, and the importance of dogs in, in our world around us, um, and yet such limited resources that, that collaborating. And so I think efficient use of the funds are to do the, go through this sort of a process where you do prioritize it and you decide to you know, come to some, I mean, it's never gonna be 100% consensus, but uh, some mutual idea, agreement about where money should be spent and then how the money should be spent. And, and again, that kind of structure, and, and we went through this uh, with endangered species work on, and on several species committees I've been on, where we decide what needs to be done and then who's going to do the work and how we can make it most efficient, right? How we can have overlaps. And so this will be a project with three institutions or, or some something like that, and, and yeah, it can absolutely be international. Um, but I think communication and collaboration and organization is the key, and I think that's my call here is, is for that, that to happen. And I think we're at a point where with the genomics information, uh, the critical mass of interest that we've seen documented that we're at the key point here where we really need to do that to, to move forward in a meaningful way. Um, so I think building off that, you mentioned a lot of gaps, right? Um, and in the animal behavior world, on these committees where you guys discuss what should we do with this next species, which one should we move forward with, how do you also deal with ethics? So are there ethics involved to deciding if we wanted to do some other version of Scott and Fuller, and how do those come into play? That, that Absolutely. I mean, we always have to deal with ethics. I mean, we, we always have to weigh, uh, you know, and we're required to do that by the federal government. We're required to do that by the funding agencies. We're required to do that by the journals, the scientific journals. We have to weigh what goes on in the research with the ethics, with the amount of information, like you say, the, the, um, the amount of information and the importance of the information that's going to come out. And that constantly has to be being weighed. And we are trained as professionals in some of those concepts and in the philosophy of some of those things. Um, so it absolutely you know, it has to be weighed. And that's the kind of discussion that I'm talking about we need to have. You know, what are the gaps? What are the methods? You know, can we even answer these questions? Can we answer them methodologically, technologically? Can we answer them ethically? You know, and there may be questions that, we, that are just not ethical to answer. You know, and we're gonna have to figure another path to get to that, you know, that kind of thing or something like that. And that absolutely has to be weighed. I guess one of the things we've seen, I guess, is actually I might defer to Julie on this because asking about citizen science is really her jam, so. All right. Um, well, I have engaged in some citizen science projects just because I felt like it was better answered in that type of fashion. And I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that as a model, either in terms of collaboration or in terms of bringing in other fields, um, because citizen science unto itself is kind of a growing, is, is a growing field. I think it's a very powerful tool. So I think there's a lot of great science, again, that can be done, you know, with the right information, with the right tools, and involving citizen science. I think there's a lot of questions we can't answer with citizen science, but I think there's a lot of questions we can answer with citizen science. And so when I talk about sitting down and deciding what the gaps are, and then the methods, you know, that's absolutely something that can be on the plate. And I think it's, it's, Again, for domestic dogs, 
it is perfect. I mean, it is really appropriate. And a lot of this work, I think, you know, has to be done ethologically. And so, for instance, in the natural habitat, you know, not in, not in cages, in, in labs and things that has to be done in the home, <laughs> which is, you know, it, or the dog park or, you know, wherever the issues are. And, and so I think, I think citizen science is perfect for that. And I think we, we've got to make use of that resource. And what's, I guess, the key prime action you'd like to see after this presentation today? I'd love to see a source of funding for a workshop. I, I would love to see a workshop put together. It could be a spin-off from Sparks. It could be a separate workshop, uh, you know, someone to organize. I mean, I can volunteer at the University of Washington or whatever, put together a list of, of research, you know, canine researchers, uh, have a moderator that you know, keeps things on track and, and really go through this. I've been through this process in a couple of cases on, on other behavior projects. And, you know, and it, it was, I was skeptical, but it was amazingly efficient. And so. Well, that's a wonderful also suggestion. We've... Um... The, the Canine Science Forum has been happening since 2008. Um, Mia and I have gone for a number of years. We did miss the first one, so sad. Um, but essentially, that would be, there, there are so many groups, and I think that's a wonderful direction yeah. that you're suggesting. Um, so I think we're going to thank you so much for your time. You bet. And we are going to be moving on um, to you. Uh, <laughs> yes, we are, that's right. <laughs> you will be introducing our next emerging researcher. Um, so stick around. We'll be back momentarily with, with that. Thank you so much.